province of Aguna, the premier place of knowledge and the arcane, you have a day's worth of free time before your meeting with the dragon, Administrator Maranzio at Aguna's Grand Library tomorrow. Uh, there are many facilities in Aguna, just as with any province, including a general shopping district, a uh, prominent scroll store called Quill Everwet, a cathedral to the north, uh, to the nature god Zudier. Uh, you could return to Bridgetown in case there's any further, I don't know, culture you'd like to explore or hear gossip, since uh, that part of Aguna is often the most busy. Uh, you could even pay visit to the library early just to explore the upper three levels. Uh, you've all told me generally what you wanted to do today, and you can do that, but it, it, just know that you're not limited to just that, if you wish to explore other okay. parts of the province. Hmm. Uh, are we all, are Lyra, Buck, and Fritz all together right now? Uh, you can split up if you so wish. If you do, uh, we'll have to roll to, for initiatives to see who goes first on their story and stuff, and just kind of swap between them the same way we did with Tigamura. I think we're at least starting the day at the same place because we're all in the end. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I would say that, like, for convenience's sake, since word is, like, under the inn, um, he could easily come, like, I don't know, poke through a window to come <laughs> meet up with you guys. And yeah, I, I think in. it's safe to say that I wouldn't want to directly interact with them until we have some strong reason to, but I will try to intermittently keep an eye on them. Right, right. Can I, I don't know if there's a way that I can communicate to word about Maranzio and our plan to like meet up at the library. I don't know if we had worked out beforehand a way for us to contact you, but I don't have any spells or anything that can do that. I don't, I don't think so. I think, I think it makes sense for me to kind of work without the information until we reconvene. Yeah. I'll just assume you're keeping watch. You can, you can do that if you would like. I, I will say though, as far as communications, Lyra does have the sending stone that has been carved. I was going to say. Yeah, because uh, they actually made like a proper sending stone that I can just use to cast sending. <laughs> oh, it, to anyone? Uh, I think so. I think it's like, did I describe like how, if it has charges or anything? Uh, I, I don't recall. To the best of my knowledge, sending stones are, uh, it's a two-way phone, like a walkie-talkie. Walkie ah, walkie -talkie. uh, okay. Well, then never mind. I guess that is. Well, we, we, talked, we talked specifically about the difference between sending stones and a stone of sending. A stone of sending. Oh. And I think you have the latter, which means I think you have a stone that allows yes. you to cast sending. Okay. I remember that. Okay. I remember us having that conversation. Yes. In my inventory, it says se sending stone, but uh, it's entirely possible that I added the wrong thing. I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna go by intention, and my intention was a stone of sending and how it works. Okay. All right. Oh, wait, no, hold on. This is correct, sorry. Uh, it functions like a normal sending stone, except that it has no matching stone. Wait. Yeah, so wait, a, never a, mind, this one's weird. It's got like secretarians and shit. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just gonna, I'll that just add a, a stone way. of sending. Yeah. 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 All right. And I would say, just so you can't just cast sending like, all the time every day. Let's say it has three charges. Ooh. Is it three total? Uh, three, three per day. day. Okay. Yeah. Stone 1d4 Sunday. plus one at dawn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's design a magic item real quick. Uh, yeah, all right. That way it's Has anybody designed a magic item for a book or anything? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> uh, but yes, if we want to get information to Word, I can, I can do that. <laughs> Yeah, so then would it be prevalent to immediately inform me that the dragon of it's Aguna, mm -hmm. yeah, that he contacted you guys? Um, yeah, probably. Yeah, I think that would be a good idea. What's his Maybe. name again? Maranzio <laughs> Santaloria. Also, I was wrong. I did have it in my inventory. I just had it called Edmund Sending Stone. <laughs> I'm good at this game. That's okay. Oh, yeah, it's we can still talk to Edmund. Yeah, if we want to use one of our three per day sendings on him. <laughs> wonder how he's doing. Hey, Edmund, just got an extra charge for today. Just wanted to say <laughs> hi. You know, I can only send three texts per day, and I'm spending one of them on you. Aw. <laughs> I mean, I guess we couldn't go around and explore the city if we wanted to. I mean, we got some time. Frankly, it might be more suspicious if we didn't visit the library. Then again, I suppose we'll have a chance to do so tomorrow. I've got some yeah. other business to attend to. I mean, well, not really other business, but I'd 
don't really have as much interest. I don't really have a lot of interest in the library at this second, especially if we're going there later. I was gonna kind of see what else is going on in the city, make sure we're not in like a. Um, what would you describe the last city we were in? Sort of a very dire situation. I'd Dystopian. Maybe get a lay of the land style. Yes. Make sure yeah. everything's going okay. I, I kind of want to go shopping. I want to look at the market. Actually, scoping out the lay of the city isn't a bad idea. I'm curious how vital to it the roots of the tree are. Smart, smart. Hmm. Oh, How about like... we start at the bottom and make our way up? Hmm. Is this good direction as any? Oh, yeah. Alright, so you guys are going to go to the shopping district then? Yeah. yeah. I guess, yeah. Shopping district's the first one there. Okay. Much right over here. It is uh, less dense than Bridgetown, thankfully. There's actually room to move around and walk. <gasps> uh, let's see here. Is... Oh, no. Did I delete it? Oh, I hope not. No. <laughs> no. It's gone. <laughs> okay, so yes, there are quite a few stores in the shopping district. There is a uh, kind of a sort of elevator style building that leads you to the scroll store. Um, but down below, you know, where you are at the, I don't know, ground level, there are a few general goods. There is a Tahero Potions, uh, of course. Uh, and what else is there? Mostly magical stuff. Um, if you wanted to get a few books, you could definitely rent or buy. However, when you're perusing the area, you do hear a very familiar, loud, obnoxious southern accent voice. Oh, wait a minute! I know those guys! <laughs> and you see a scraggly little tabaxi man sitting on a carpet laid out. Hey, pilgrims, long time no see! Some things never change. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. See, I didn't, I didn't catch you back in uh, that, that, that other place with all the lava and such. Cause, uh, screw that. <laughs> it's good to see you, No Tail. If the travel's been treating you well, you look great. Oh yeah, thanks. Oh, you noticed my new haircut? Mm, thank you. You're a charmer, but that's not gonna get you a discount. Hmm? I wouldn't really. <laughs> home for a discount. What, what do you got? What do you awesome got? some new good stuff. Take a look. And you will notice that he does have indeed a few new things. You can peruse the uh, his wares at your leisure. He does still have sugar bombs. Ooh, I'm reading some of these. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff here. I was looking at the sympathy bracelets. I'm not gonna lie, thought of friendship bracelet with like. <laughs> <laughs> but does it make you like feel each other's pain? <laughs> we'll find out. I get. Oh no. <laughs> oh, a potion concentration would be good for you. Yeah. I would like to credit Dota Two for some of these items. Uh, hey. Inspiration, like the Soul Ring armlet of Mordigian and Hood of Defiance. Not the enchanted tomato. I'm assuming that's not. Uh, that is actually, <laughs> although it's oh, not. Oh, is it really? It is not oh. called an enchanted tomato in Dota, unfortunately. Despite the fact that they have a mango and a tango, and it looks huh. like a red tomato, it could it could be an enchanted tomato if they were brave, but they're not. Yeah, I think I'll I'll burn some cash Ooh, on that potion of concentration. Look at the Would you like only the one? Uh, he does sell multiple if you wish to oh. stock up on them. He found more than one in that hut. Uh, mm, honestly, I, I think I'll only take one because I apparently already have one in my inventory, which tells me I don't use them as much as I should. Okay, Smart I'm gonna off. be spending a lot of money. I hope you're ready. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I will Let's warn you go. not to spend it all because there's still plenty of other things that might catch your eye in this town. I know. But I've seen some things that seem very good, and I've got quite a bit of money, you know, after my Pratankits little minute, my little <laughs> show last time. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh... 
Oh, thank you. I didn't realize. Oh yeah, there we go. Um, I want to get the Hood of Defiance. Mm. Right. Ooh. I think that would be pretty good. I've noticed I get a couple of spells thrown at me. So okay, I here. That. All right, you may subtract 300 gold pieces, and this is the Hood of Defiance. While equipped, you have advantage on all saving throws from spells. Whoa! Mm hmm. And then I wanted to pick up the Cloak of Tortoise Shell for Word. Hmm, that's nice. Okay. They had to give away their coat, so I'll give them something in return. Mm. Right. I think that would be useful for word if I'm reading it right. So here is the cloak of tortoise shell. Ooh. Yeah. Whoa. Plus two AC. Oh, but only Psst. when you're what? prone. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh wait, I, I have uh, grovel, cower, and beg that I'm pretty sure makes me prone. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, so, do you want it? But I can do that. Uh, do you yeah, want it? Sure. Okay, cool. I'll buy it for you. Um, and do you want the friendship bracelet with me? Sure, yes. why not? <laughs> cool. Sympathy bracelets, please. Yay. All around. <laughs> maybe, it, maybe it got put out of rotation, but it's fun. There's also a thing called a fluffy hat for 25 gold pieces. Uh, <gasps> the description is, it's a hat and it's fluffy. Good for long trips in the mountains in case you want to keep your ears warm. I'm good. I can puff up. <laughs> can I buy the p the puffy hat? The fluffy hat? What for is 20, it? Fluffy hat? The fluffy hat. Yeah, for twenty five gold pieces. Yeah, I'll buy it for word. <laughs> so it is. It is actually a magical item. Oh. While wearing, you are resistant to cold damage, but are vulnerable yeah. to fire damage. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> the fluff. Okay. Uh, let me add all of this to my inventory. Yeah, I spent a lot of money, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Yay. I've spent most of this campaign not buying anything, so I was like, okay, I kind of want to... Yeah, so what do the sympathy bracelets do? Oh, did you buy them? Okay, yes. Uh, yes! Da, 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 da. I've already subtracted everything, Here so don't worry. Sympathy bracelets. I've, sub I've subtracted for the fluffy hat. Ooh. I'm just adding... Oh, of... I like that. I like that a lot. What does it mean by attunement? How uh, do I it takes an attunement system? slot. Uh, if you don't have many have magic 40. items, it's not going to be an issue. But Yeah, basically, it's do. like a magical okay. equipment slot, and you can have up to three magic items attuned. Cool. Uh, then I'm fine. Um, yeah, you're fine. And then... What? Just add it to your inventory now, the tortoise shell thing, because I'm going to give it to you at some okay. point, so just add it now. Um, cool. Sympathy bracelets. So if you're wearing Let the sympathy bracelets and the hood of defiance, that is two of your three uh, attunement slots taken. Mm -hmm. That is fine. I think I literally have no magic. This is the first time I'm doing it. So. Wow. Wow. Uh, I also think you should look at the soul ring, maybe, Alara. Hmm. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what that means, but... Oh, also, catch! And I'm throwing you the gla the, the sympathy bracelet. Yay! If you would like um, an arcana check, and Ooh. if it's high enough, I'll just let you know what it does. What the soul ring does? Yeah, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll roll my tasty plus one. <laughs> to see if okay. you can discern. Oh! Okay. Oh well. All right. This uh, this is a, a type of ring you've seen before, and you understand that it is a ring that can be used to. Let me see. Let me look at the description. Do, 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 do. Here we go. I'll just put the description in with that high of a roll. Yay. Ooh. Ooh. Devious. I like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll 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 burn two hundred gold on that sucker. Uh, although I will say the um, uh, the sympathy bracelet, it seems like it would probably be better equipped on somebody who has uh, hit points to spare, <laughs> since what it ab lets you just take damage for them. What about um, how do I say that? The the phylactery. Oh, phylactery. That's a, that's another phylactery. Dota, Dota item. Well, I'm mainly doing this for RP reasons, because Fritz is the type. If you get hurt, <laughs> they would want to take the damage instead of you. Hmm. We oh, like some. We like we like us uh, a RP play. Yes. So yeah, technically it would be more smart to give this to Buck, but <laughs> RP wise, 
Fritz is like, I want to protect. It's like their way of little mini protection. I, I'm not going to, if, I mean, if your character wants to check what it is, but Fritz doesn't say, they're like, friendship bracelet. <laughs> I love it. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to make a custom item that requires attunement, and I don't think D&D uh, D &D Beyond is smart enough for that, but mm. that's okay. Wait, that means if you take burning damage, I could technically go, no, you don't, and I take it, and because I have the Hood of Defiance, I would get a advantage on my saving throw against it. Well, that's not how... It goes I, a spell. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know how it works. Hold on. They, okay. would, they would make the save first. You wouldn't be making the save. They would, okay. and you would be taking the dam the half of the damage from them. Okay. 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 So oh, it's kind of like see. a reaction. So if they take damage and I'm like, oh, that's too much damage, and I can reaction... Um, take some, yeah. Sympathy bracelets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Uh, I don't think I have access to the correct homebrewing menu to be able to do that, but that's okay. I'll just add it manually. Yeah, I've just been doing that this entire time. Yeah. Oh, I still have my smut book. Oh, I still have Stick of Stickiness. You know what? I want to show it to him because I brought it from him. But like, I still got it. Oh, <laughs> that's nice. You know, usually uh, last customer I sold that one too. Uh, they didn't. They didn't keep it for long. But you, I know that you'll be able to find the secrets behind the stick of stickiness. Oh, yeah, I used it as a fishing rod. Oh, there you go. That's just one of the many versatile uses <laughs> of that magical artifact. I completely forgot I used it, and then I read my... I've been writing some notes within the item of what I've been doing with it, and I've just put stick of stickiness rod form. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. I'd say it's paying for itself. And Fritz with the deep pockets. Yeah. I was actually... Is he willing to buy unusual items? Yes. I will say now, though, at a... Mm -hmm. Like, whenever you present this idea to him... He gives you a very crappy price on them, which you could haggle uh. with him, which will require some charisma checks. Okay. Um, I wanted to see if he's willing to buy the mimic ring. The <laughs> mimic ring. Let's see. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. It's a mimic, but a ring. Quite a unique thing. Ooh. Oh, that rhymes. I'll give you. Hold on. Let me How about six gold pieces for it? Okay, I want to see if I can haggle him. <laughs> All right, I'm going to need you to give me your choice of persuasion, performance, or a straight charisma. Persuasion. Or what actually, before, before you do, actually, how, uh, describe to me how you're trying to haggle him. I'm going to be like, oh, come on. I've been such a loyal customer. I've spent a many gold. I'm sure we could make up a little bit of a deal. You know you won't be making a loss on me. Okay, give me a persuasion with that. Okay. Uh, I don't very. I don't have a high persuasion. I'm not very good at this. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. You. I'm sorry, friend, but I gotta run a business, and I can't let personal feelings come into it, you know. But because of your persistence, I'll cut you a deal. How about seven gold pieces? <laughs> How much did the roll for these cost again? Oh, uh, they were like fifty were gold. They free? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no. Mm -mm. I'm like, I can't do. Sorry. That's all right. Understandable. One man of business to another. Mm. Just with the mimic ring, why aren't you worth more? <laughs> yeah, hey. that's about it. I kind of just wanted to see if I could do that. Mm. Uh, Buck or Word, I know you're not technically there, but I, I'd say you could spy from afar. Um, anything mm. that catches your guys' eye? I bought the hat. Um, <laughs> the yeah. fluffy hat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bought the fluffy hat. Nice. That one yeah, notably. Really did you add the, that one notably did you add the cloak? does not require attunement. Got it. <laughs> I'm not putting it How on. are you gonna wear two hats? Oh. I'm not <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to Word, I think. <laughs> Aw, we're just absolutely balling them out. Here's a cloak and here's a fluffy hat. <laughs> he did you disguise. add that to your inventory by the way? I, I did. I, I added the Okay, the cool, cloak. cool, 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 cool. I just thought it would be fun. Now, if you grovel, you you have what is it advantage of some kind? Yeah, lots of protection against physical stuff. Yeah, so if you grovel and someone tries to hit you, it's like, ha, psych. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, I, it doesn't leave me prone, but it'd be nice to do both actions. Mm -hmm. So I, I always... Um, you guys got anything else? Yeah, anything else? I think I'm all good. No, I, I think after seeing you guys buy stuff for me, I will hold on to my cash and see if I can't get something shinier. You're saying my cloak isn't good enough for you? <laughs> no, I'm saying I want to add to it. Ooh, pay back Ooh. with interest. Stuff. Wow. Stuff. All right, well, I say uh, your shopping with No Tail uh, concludes, and he thanks you for your business and has his little cackle. And, uh, yeah, there are other stores around if uh, there are ones you wish to explore, like uh, the... The scroll store, if you wish to go there. We probably should for you, Leora, right? It might be worth. Do you checking have coin out. to spend? Yeah, uh, I've got, I've got some. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a bit spent now. Uh, okay. So I think is... it's worth an investigation at least. So yes, you go to scroll see, time. Scroll store. New hot scroll NPC store. maybe. <laughs> Maybe we'll see. I try my best. Main reason we explore. <laughs> <laughs> Where are they? <laughs> I mean, we were fed last time with the former dragon. Oh. Oh, thanks. Do you see the current <laughs> dragon? Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, yeah, we were fed yeah. last time both. <laughs> in right. both cases. Let's see. They're like, oh, anyone can be a dragon. No, must be this no. hot. <laughs> ah, there we go. So. You take the elevator um, and you feel a gust of wind kind of carry you upwards into the upper part of the uh, financial district, the trade district. And you find the Quill Everwet. And inside you see an owlin man who seems to have a thousand yard stare and an equally kind of <laughs> mundane voice. And he gives you a very dead wave. Welcome to Quill Everwet. Can I help you? I love him. Oh. I love him. Who's that? Why couldn't this guy be my dad? Who's that guy in Animal Crossing who like owns the coffee shop and never expresses emotions? Oh, okay. oh I know who you mean. Yeah. Brewster. Who gives, Brewster. Yeah. Who gives you oh, yeah. life Brewster. advice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now this, uh, I will say, this is actually one of the commissions that I've been doing over the past like couple of weeks and stuff as a, as a credit. Uh, this original character's original name is uh, uh, Rocky. And so, uh, whoever commissioned me to draw Rocky, thank you very much. Heck yeah. Yay. Oh, that's, a cute, that's a cute way to insert people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, repurpose them. So yes, you up. may notice he has a lot of services, and you can buy a spell scroll up to fifth level spell scroll. If you scroll down, you can see his services. Uh, including, if you have any magic items you feel like you're not using, you can draw out their power and add them to your ability scores, if you so wish. Oh. Leaving them mundane. And 200 gold. if I, something is a magical item? Uh, basically, if it has any additional effect to it that isn't just deal damage or give you AC. Basically, anything that like requires attunement or like has a special effect that, like, oh, this does this thing. Um, oh, you know, this is weird. I still have that weirdly heavy black marble I got ages and ages ago that I still don't know what it does. Hmm. Uh... But honestly, that's probably something I should get somebody to like identify or appraise rather than just sell I it mean, in case it's really cool. I imagine they could appraise it. What Maybe? Else? I don't okay. seem to have that as an option. I do also have this orb of direction, which is basically a fancy compass. Um, <laughs> I don't think I've ever used it, but it is a wondrous item and I feel bad about destroying it. Uh, I have three rings, the sympathy bracelets, my fishing rod, which I don't think is very magical, it's a fishing rod. <laughs> I love the idea of just being like, stick. <laughs> but do you have an extra 200 gold to spend on it, is the question. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't spend... <laughs> I'll tell you what I do have. I do have a fluffy hat. And I do... <laughs> and that, I is do... A, that is a magical item. <laughs> Well, as, as good as plus one to an ability score is, I did pick a character whose thing is random chance, and I see change a magical item special properties to a different random effect. Yes. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I might be able to give you... Uh, does the Ring of Steve count as magical? Yes, it does. The Ring of Steve. Buck, do you want my Ring of Steve to try this on? I don't want you to get rid of your fluffy hat. 
You know, I, I would, I really would like to see what I can change this hat into doing before I give it to Word. As much as it's probably be helpful in its current condition, I think it would be funnier to see what I can, what sort of magical properties I can put on the hat. Can, can you, how, how, how much money do you have? <laughs> I've got 400 gold. Do you mind also doing Ring of Steve for me? I'll buy you, you want, a pint. Do you want me to randomize your Ring of Steve? I'm curious. I'm not gonna lie. I'll buy you a pint. Sure, sure. Let, let me randomize yeah. the hat first to see to see what okay. happens with that, and then maybe you can make a decision about whether or not that's something you want. Um, excuse me, um, Francesco. Yes. Just uh, got a hat here. It's got a couple magical properties. Was wondering if I could transmute it and see see what we can come up with of course Feeling lucky today he puts out like a little silver tray place it on the tray and please step back three feet <laughs> i put it on the tray and I, only and I three step feet back. i step back four feet in fact <laughs> <laughs> and he takes what looks to be a domish glass cover and covers it over the hat uh, on the tray and he takes out a wand whisks it around and chants a few things uh, flicks it at the uh, covered hat, and inside you see poosh! A puff of smoke, and the hat looks to be a different color. I'm going to need you to roll a d100. Yay! Uh, <laughs> roll one d100. Okay. Ooh, high three. number. Yes. High Ooh. number's good, right? Three. Okay. <laughs> Everybody loves yeah. a high number. Spin the wheel. <laughs> And he kind of looks at it a little bit, covers his hands over the cover and stares at it. He pulls out a magnifying glass. All right, and your complimentary identification. And now your fluffy hat has a new effect and has lost its old one. Mm hmm Okay. Your hat, <laughs> your fluffy hat, has now become a fluffy hat of repelling force. Huh. Okay. Oh, okay. And as a bonus action, while you're grappled uh, by a creature or a oh, <laughs> And the grapple by destroying You can destroy it, and you will <gasps> huh. exit no. the grapple. Hmm. All right. Okay. I mean, it's not, not too bad. I mean... Mm, seems well, lucky like not on kinda... your side. Yeah. Uh, th thank you for, for your help. Uh... You still want to do the ring? Well, I, you see, um, I can have the money. So I was wondering <laughs> oh no, I, no, I'll two. do it. Oh yeah, no, I'll okay. get it for, I'll get it <laughs> okay. for you. I'll I will get it for do, you. I will, if you're paying for it with a caveat of if it's good, you keep it. If it's I mean, not, it'll no, go back this, to me. It, <laughs> I, I am happy to do this for you as a friend. I mean, we, I don't, to be honest, we don't get much, uh, we, I, I mean, this kind of sounds sad to say, but we don't have a ton of adventure in left. I mean, we got one more heart to get. It's the least I could do. Oh, uh, okay. No, I just I, I didn't mean I didn't mean it like that. I mean, regardless, this is gonna come to an end one way or the other. Be, and as you can see, and I hold up my hand, I have like three rings on <laughs> on one of my hands. Oh yeah, uh, I forgot you have a lot. Yeah, the, the uh, ring is always something that's easy to remember someone by, so it's not a big deal. <laughs> and then I'll I'll uh, put down the ring and fifty I, more gold to transfer. I had to hold back making a joke. Oh my god! <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, Buck's very used to giving rings to people. I'm How many not, times now? You know what? I'm keeping this one. Actually, <laughs> you actually don't get this back. Roll me a D100. Do you want to roll it? Uh, yeah. Uh, play? How do I play, do you it? roll it. Uh, slash R. Slash R space. R space. 41. 41. Nice. Okay. Right in the middle. Probably a bell curve uh, thing, right? Like middle is good. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. Your, it kills you instantly. <laughs> your ring of Steve <laughs> becomes a boomer ring. Uh -huh. Ooh. Any thrown uh -huh. object oh. tries to return to the owner's hand, and you have to pass <gasps> a DC 10 to catch Wait, it. Wait, I can use my javelins now! Oh my god, Finally! that's Finally! It just took this us how many sessions? <laughs> now it is, I'll take my ring back, please. <laughs> it, is, it is once per day. Um, but yes, you can basically Thor pull, try to catch back your item. 
That's so cool. I take I take the ring and I'm like, and I hold it up as high as I can. It's like, all right, Fritz, here you go. Just get, you can take it back now. You know I can fly, right? <laughs> uh, it's all the way up here. I don't know if you just can climb it. him. How else will he learn? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start climbing back. I'm getting the ring. <laughs> no, all right, all right. I didn't think you'd do it. Here, here, here. <laughs> Lair is like, right. climb him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Indulge your inner feline. <laughs> I'm not, the thing is, I think we're similar heights. So she's like, you know, I could reach this, but okay, starts climbing. Well, the 10 foot bugbear reach has got to be doing some hard work <laughs> yeah, here. I've got some, yeah, I've got yeah. some, I've got a long reach. <laughs> God, have you ever actually had a bird climb you? It's not fun. It's not fun. I knew a person who had like a parakeet, yeah, and that claws. parakeet was very claw -y. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah, I know we've been on this journey for a while. You gotta cut your nails or something. I mean, gee, I'm losing some of my fur here. The weapons. I get it, I get it. <laughs> All right, well, is thank there... you, Francesco. Uh, any, uh, are, are you guys done here then? Any, no other transmutations or. Oh, yeah, Lyra, did you want anything? I think I'm good. Weirdly enough, all of my stats are even numbers such that improving them by one would do nothing for me. Uh, yeah, so same, that's same here. I think it's because we use that like that like standard distribution of stats, so we all have like the same set mm. of numbers just arranged mm. differently. So they're all they're all even numbers. Yeah, you'd so have increasing to, them by one does nothing. Yeah, you'd have to yeah, get have two items and four. Yeah, and gold. I I have sub four hundred gold, so I would be able to afford it anyway. All right, well then, if uh, there's no other purchases to be made, he uh, lets you out the door. Thank you for stopping by. And, uh, yeah, I think perhaps now might be a good time for you guys to go and do your things that you planned to do. Yeah. Perhaps. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, I wanted uh, to try uh, to make money. Can <laughs> I quickly sneak in and change my ring of heavy to a dexterity bonus? Yes, actually. <laughs> Francesco has no qualms about you since he doesn't know who you are. And yeah, you may yes. roll me a, a d100. Oh, no, oh. I'm changing it to an ability oh, score. Oh, an ability score. You Never are, mind. Oh, I didn't, I didn't listen power. because I'm a bad listener. Yeah, go ahead. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So you place, uh, you place the ring on, the, is it the ring that you put? Yeah, the ring ring of heavy. I think ring of heavy. Okay. The trade right now. Put put it on the tray, and uh, Francesco just like, please stand back two feet right on the mark, and you can see that there is like, a little, uh, kind of, painting of two feet, uh, kind of okay, next huh. to the desk. Yeah, I, I, I back up and I do a little pose on top of it. <laughs> please stand still. And he takes his wand, whisks it over the ring. It gets kind of fused into the wand, into a bright light. And he walks on over, holding the wand with the other hand, kind of holding it as if to block, like, the wind from blowing out a fire. And he sprinkles it over you as the light showers below you. And you may add plus one to any of your chosen ability scores. Ooh. I'm surprised it didn't hurt. <laughs> no, right. it's quite refreshing sometimes, actually. I feel fast. <laughs> and then I run out the door like a child. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Okay, uh, I'll say we shall roll initiative to see who will uh, do their thing first, unless you guys would like to volunteer to do a thing. You know, do your thing first. Oh, just and I would propose, since uh, Word, you haven't really had the chance to do much, um, if you would like to go first, if, if the, everyone would be fine with that. I do think Word should go me. first, yeah. Would yeah. you like that, Logan? Yeah, sure. All right. Word, you said you wanted to steal some stuff. Yes! <laughs> I need to accumulate power, and I know how to start. Okay. Which... I've always tried to accumulate knowledge in this game, and it has not exactly functioned. Oh, there we go. Jeez. I had to reload it for both pages. Wow. All right. But yes, how uh, would you like to go about your perusing? Yes. Step one, I will use my ring of the bird brain. Well, actually, no. It's step one before that. I will go to the market. I will buy bird seed and jerky. Okay. That's pretty cheap. Oh. Only costs like a gold piece. All right. I spend that gold piece. And then I go to the birds and the creatures that fly and witness the area. 
and I will use my magical ring of bird brain to convince them to keep an eye out for me. And I Ooh. think I would try and replicate the uh, Trevisetta sigil or emblem and say, look out for anyone who wears this. If they frequently visit anyone, like, let me know. If they go to a specific area, let me know. Just, like, let me know sort of their migration habits Whoa, is what I'd be asking the birds. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, uh, remind me what the Ring of Bird Brain does again. Let's me talk to birds. Oh, it lets you talk to birds. Okay, well. Yeah, just it's, constantly. It's not just about talking to birds. You have to convince them because you can talk to them, but you also have to convince them. So your choice of persuasion or animal handling is these birds are like, oh, yeah, why should we listen to you, short stuff? Has a nat 20. <laughs> Holy shit, a nat 20 <laughs> convinces <Whoa>. all of them. <laughs> oh, he was just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, How about two bags of jerky. Oh my gosh! And one of the birds like kind of claws at the other one with its talon. Don't you know this is Wood, the God King from Trevacetta? Oh my gosh! You're that Wood? <laughs> I was never here, but also come visit me frequently. Okay. All right. We'll try to follow your scent. Good. And follow this symbol also. And anyone who looks. At you don't know what important people look like. Uh, anyone wearing a bunch of shiny stuff or anyone wearing this symbol, let me know. You got it, Wood! Another one claws that one. His name is Wood, idiot! Dude, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I walk off without another word. You hear the birds kind of <laughs> in the distance. I thought his name was Wad! <laughs> Wood. <laughs> oh. So yes, I will say that you have special protection that the birds will come down to alert you whenever you are getting nearby some of the guards. And just for convenience's okay. sake, cool. you are like safe from them. Yeah. Uh, and then I will just look around for powerful magic items, any semblance of connections, just any sort of underground power that I can maybe use in what I imagine is the coming fight in this city. Okay, underground power. You do know that uh, there are some very uppity and mischief-making students of the University of Laguna that uh, kind of sneak out some things that they shouldn't. Uh, you do know that there is a very... the the clerk of the Tejero Potions, judging by you just spying on him, he seems very fed up with his job and is trying to sneak out a few potions for himself, seeing as uh, you could probably tell, Tahero Potions does not treat him well or pay him well. Uh, you know that there are some stray books that, uh, because this place is so well organized and well kept, a lot of people are very happy to just leave their belongings laying around without a care in the world because most of the people in Aguna, they don't really have need for most things, so thievery is a very uncommon thing. So okay. it, a lot of things are yours for the taking. Is there anything specific you're looking for? Or just anything that looks important? That's a really good and very broad question. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're trying to look for a thing that can do a specific thing, we can roll for it. Uh, but yeah. if not, if you're looking more generally, just anything that looks expensive, that'll be a lot easier to find. You just won't exactly know what it does. You'll just know that it's important and expensive. Yeah, okay. So Word would probably be looking for something along the lines of foresight or combat strength. But if he isn't able to recognize that because he can't read... Oh no, I can't use that book. Um... <laughs> no... Yeah, He'll... that's an example of something expensive that is maybe not necessarily useful, but expensive. Yeah, I'll I'll probably just start looking for shiny, jagged things, or um... I'm okay. sorry, I don't have a good answer for no, this. No, that's okay. Prompt. How about you just roll <laughs> me three d six? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see what you grab. That. Ooh, dang. Whoa. Jeez. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Okay, so uh, two of the things you grab are actually some... You're going to have to roll again. I'm so sorry. You grab right. a couple of level five spell scrolls just like laying around that someone had bought, but it was like in a pile and they weren't really paying attention. So, let's see. Okay. I do have spell scrolls 
that I think I've transcribed. So it, would it be under the condition that I could read basic magic but not common? Yes, or? I would say for convenience of okay. gameplay sake, you would be able yeah. to understand what these spell scrolls are and use them. Right. I think that's a narrative hindrance anyway. Yeah, for cool. sure. So I'm going to need you to roll me... Roll me a D... Jeez. Roll me a, d a d100. Okay, 53, and then one more. Oh, 57. Okay. Ooh, this one might be very useful. Okay, one of the scrolls you took is Insect Plague. Yep. And the other scroll is Mislead. Oh. oh. And Mislead, all right. Yeah, what does Mislead do? Uh, you become uh, invisible at the same time as an illusory double of you appears as where whoa. you are standing. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's a really oh, good that's spell. awesome. Cool. All right. It's yes. And as for the six, you are able to uh, sneak in to the Tahero potions, actually. And uh, because I've been wanting to show this portrait, uh, you see that there is an elven man, a half elven man, who just looks. Like he's having just a, a great time, a, a really great time. Oh, uh, behind the counter. <laughs> <gasps> it's the burger guy from Undertale. That's my guy. <laughs> and uh, you walk inside, and you, he is just so focused on on doing such a good job that uh, you're able to sneak up behind him, and you can actually take your pick of what potion you'd like to take from the mana potion or the health potion. You can nab okay. one. Uh, yeah, I'll do the superior health potion for sure. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> you can awesome, hear under you. his breath, he is rehearsing, Welcome to Tahero's Potions, where we bring a smile to your face. Welcome to Tahero's Potions, where we bring a smile to your Aww. face. This poor guy. We'll save him by killing everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, that is what you steal. And in your perusal, you also hear kind of someone as you're kind of sneaking out you there's my notes yes. narrative you also uh, hear someone kind of down an alleyway and as you're kind of going down you hear you see a, an aracocra woman kind of speaking to herself but she doesn't seem to be making any sort of somatic gestures as if she were casting message or sending and uh, and you hear her kind of with, with your passive uh, perception. She just speaks, well, then I guess we'll need to start soon if we want to be able to reach the tree in time. And perhaps your last partner just wasn't as good as he thought as one, but he was then. God, King. How arrogant can you be? <gasps> oh, <gasps> Begonias! Eric Cockrell woman. Do I not recognize her at all? No, you do not. I will say, uh, I'll give you the portrait. You're looking kind of uh, at, uh, just... Uh, trying to perceive what you see. She seems to have yeah. a lot of gray, grayish feathers with a uh, blue mage's robe and, and uh, kind of sky blue, uh, what's it called, scarf. And she seems okay. to just be planning out some things on some papers, trying to keep herself hidden, but not doing a great job thanks to your very good perception. Here's how she looks. Oh no, okay. unfortunately I love her. <laughs> At the same time, while this is happening, on the other kind of uh, down the street, you see also uh, Aleandra kind of walking down, and she seems to be conversing with some sort of pedestrian, but in hushed whispers that you can't quite hear among the crowd. And um, they, she seems to hand something small and shiny while she's looking around trying to make sure nobody sees. To, she hands it to the other pedestrian who also is looking around. Okay. Um, should I make an active perception to look at the shiny? You may. Okay. There we go. Okay, Whoa, yes. Diggity. You see, uh, you can tell from that perception as a, uh, on top of what the item is, you can tell that this is one of the undercover Travis Seddon guards. Uh, okay. Based on his movements, his demeanor, uh, it's very familiar to the ones that you saw in Trevisetta. And what he handed him was a key, a bright golden key. Okay, am I able to hear at all 
what they discuss. Hmm. W- watching their lip reading, uh, she says something about lock it up tight. But okay. that's all it, that's all you are able to lip read, unfortunately. Yeah. I'll, I'll dedicate the rest of my time following him. Okay, you're going to follow the guard instead of the uh, the Aarakocra woman? I, I will thoroughly study uh, the glasses that she's wearing, making myself familiar with them, potentially for locate objects. Ah, smart. Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the guard seems to take general priority. All right. Uh, so, yes, then you have decided to go follow the guard instead. Now, uh, you are able to kind of avoid a lot of the other guards' perception thanks to your bird friends, but I will need a stealth check with with advantage thanks to your birds. Okay, cool. And what are you trying to do? Just follow him and try and steal his key? Uh, I want to see where and when he uses the key and then potentially seal it after. Mm, Okay. Oh, damn. Oh, All right. the same rule. He never very, misses. very good. Um, Word cannot fail he cannot unless fail. it's important. Yes. You follow him <laughs> down the street. He kind of goes to sort of an underbelly part of the city where there's an abandoned building that he walks into and he seems to cast an arcane... He starts to begin uh, casting an arcane aura to sort of seal you out. You're able to sneak your way in before he does while he's getting the spell ready. And inside is this very decrepit and dingy and dusty little abandoned building, very similar to the one that, um, well, I guess you wouldn't know this, but uh, out of character, above board, the other three, similar to the building the other three were in when you had your meeting with Alejandro. And he goes and he seems to have a piece of parchment of some kind that he puts in a locked box in the very back of the room and locks it tight with the key and then the locked box flashes a dim arcane pink and then sits there it is completely locked he puts the key in his back pocket seals it okay he does I I watch him closely he doesn't say anything or do anything other than just have a movement with the key yep he just uses it like a normal key Okay, I'll cast Invisibility, and I will steal the key. <laughs> okay, like, where? as he's going to put the key in his pocket, your hand is, like, in the pocket and just grabs it <laughs> right out from under him. <laughs> <laughs> and then he yes. looks around, checks. He does glance over in your direction briefly, but not looking at you, almost past you, because you are invisible. I'm so calm. Yeah. He has a little nod, <laughs> then goes back to his arcane door, disenchants it, leaves, reenchants it, and it casts an illusion of a wall over it. Oh, he re Okay. Cool. Mm. I know how to get out of here. I can't read. I take the note. <laughs> I try. <laughs> you open the locked box with a magical key that you met. Oh, no. The kind of bright pink just shoop, flashes. You open it, and yep, you cannot read this parchment. If only I were smarter. <laughs> this should have used easy. the plus one. Yeah, you could have raised the end. Plus one to intelligence. <laughs> no. Okay. I will do my best to take this to my friends. And I, I, I hang out there for another 15 minutes. The spell lasts for an hour, and then I'll, I'll sneak back to probably just to their room to place the note there. All right. Ooh. Well, then next, let's go to Buck, if that's all all right. That's fine. Yeah, thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay, Buck. So, you wanted to go search for something. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. I want to go visit Tahero Potions. Also. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Um, back to the D&D. Uh, Buck, you were looking yes. for a specific thing. Is there a specific way you are going to look for them? I would think either... Um, now that I think about it, the library might be a good place to look, but I don't know if there's <laughs> to the any library. gambling sort of places that would be. Um, I'm going to spend my oh, downtime at the I, library. I have an I have an idea because there's a there's a is my name on the um, uh, the library card? It most certainly is. Yes. 
So can I like go, I want to go to the library and see if there's like an information desk to see if I can like look up someone's name. Okay, yes, I would say so. Uh, you go to the library and at the front desk at the very top level, there is a very well read oh, and well dressed looking knoll man with bright red uh, spectacles. And uh, he greets you. And his name is Does Administrator he Diego. Profile? He lets you in. And whoop, there he is. Yay! Yay! Oh. This is Diego Burando. Wow, and, uh, he's like casually cosplaying Vash the Stampede. That's great. <laughs> this is another portrait that I did as a commission. Uh, so thank you. Uh, I forget the name, but thank you for allowing sort of an me Alu to card draw style. your character. Glasses. Oh, yeah. oh, true, true, yeah. yeah. That was like a thing Ooh, in the 90s. And uh, he mentions to you, yes, we do have record of all who check out books. However, I hesitate to see what uh, allows you to look through our records. We take our privacy of our users very seriously. Right, well, it's just um, this, this person who I need to talk to. They, um, it's just been a while since I've seen him. I just really just want to confirm that they're here in the city of Boston. Uh, I apologize, but uh, we're not exactly person to give away that sort of information. Perhaps you might be some sort of creepy stalker for all I know. Well, I don't know about all that, but I do know, and I hate to pull this card. I'm a, I'm a pilgrim. Does that uh, being a pilgrim kind of help? His face does not situation? change expression at oh, all. He okay. blinks for a second. <laughs> well, oh, um, well, much as I appreciate the work that you do, Mr. Pilgrim, uh, that doesn't exclude you from possibly being a creepy stalker, now does it? It does not. Um, so <laughs> I reach in, I reach uh, into my bag and I pull out the uh, uh, "Lost and Adrift" by Chingles McBallister the Fourth. <laughs> oh, I like that one. Uh, not his new it works, unfortunately. Uh, kind of fell off the deep end. Seems so like a very disturbed this. man. You've read the you've read "Lost and Adrift" then? I have. It's uh, one of my favorites, actually. Uh, it doesn't hold a candle to some of the other romances that I, I like to store away, but uh, it does its job. I, I like it because it's it's simple in the sense that it tells kind of a, a love story oh, yeah. between two people in a in a very simple way. Two people who are destined for each other. And I start to think, what if I like get choked up? Like, just imagine that you were keeping apart these two characters, uh, and Aldian and Ever Ever gone, and they needed to get together. And the only thing keeping them apart wasn't wasn't the great war that was fought on the King's Mill, but it was a simple library clerk who could have done something. Give me a persuasion. <laughs> I'm tugging at his heartstrings. Persuasion, persuasion, persuasion. Here we go. I want to use my luck. I, no, no, no. Yeah, I have a luck. Use, I have, use your lucky. Yeah. All right. Yeah, hold on, let me find... Uh, do I just re-roll again? You may re-roll. Okay. Uh... Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Do I have to use the one? I think Lady I do. Lady Luck is making a point today, I my think, friend. I think I have to use... The, do I? Hold on. What uh, does it say? You can say? spend an additional roll. Oh, I choose which pick die to use. Oh, pick, <laughs> pick the one. I'm picking the one. I'll pick the one. Okay. He closes his book, sighs. You do know I'm a grown man who can differentiate between fiction and reality, yes? I squint. <laughs> uh, and yeah, in yes. this reality, you are giving me very, very bad energy to the point that I might possibly have to call the guards for a little bit of no. investigation on you, Mr. Pilgrim. No, 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 I don't think that's going to be necessary. In fact, I can't even... I just... I like the glasses. They're nice. I'll be taking my book here. Let me just... In fact, you keep... You want the book? You can have it. I can make a donation so you don't have to call the... No oh need. I've God. already got my signed copy. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, I've met... Uh, I've met the author before myself. Um, he's actually signed my copy. Mm -hmm. Something we have in common, you know. The answer's still no. Okay, I'm gonna go then. It was nice meeting you. I'm Buck. It's not... I'll see you later. All right. <laughs> he, I, I close the door to the library and I press my back against the door and I slink down the entire length of the door. <laughs> you can tell that while you were on your way out, he had not lost his eyes locked on you. 
the whole way while you are leaving. He is making God, sure man. that you are up there. Uh, no trouble. <laughs> and as you okay. slink down, um, you see outside, you are actually approached. Uh, someone, uh, an old uh, hobgoblin man, kind of disheveled, kind of poorly dressed in rags, and it seems as though he hasn't really gotten that good of sleep. And he's like, oh, I, I, I can see your, your conviction. I, I know what you're looking for, young lad. Uh, you you do? I, I, I see that look in your eye, but I, I do need some help by, by myself if, if you would if you hear me out. Um, uh, sure. I mean, what well, what kind of help are you looking for? I'm not... If you're looking for some, like, someone to do a thorough analysis of, like, a book, I don't... I, oh, I'm no, not no, really... no, not, not at all, young man. And here is the old man. You can see he's very disheveled. He's got gray what hairs, happened? and he's lacked <clears throat> some sleep, and he's missing a tusk, it seems. Uh, well, uh, the first thing I'll need is, is, is your trust, young man. And just a, a spare coin. Just, just, just a single gold piece w would do. Just, just one. Well, you've already treated me a little bit kinder than that last fella, so sure, give him a coin, I guess. All right, as you're handing it to him, there's a student that comes out of the library, and he sees you. You, you can see that it is a, an Aarakocra student, just a bird folk, and he just scoffs and, ah, oh, don't give him a single coin from your purse. If you want to help, it's better off giving to the shelter in Bridgetown rather than this swindler. He not... Swindler? I mean, he's just... Just a guy down on his luck, he asked for a little bit of help. I mean, we've all been there. The Aarakocra, like, uh, just rolls his eyes a little bit. I seen him around all the time. You give him a few pieces, and he spends them all gambling it away or donating to a cathedral to some stupid superstition. His pilgrim funds weren't enough, apparently, and he has the nerve to beg for more after he's spent it all. <coughs> I, like, look, I look at the Aarakocra, and then I look down at the Hobgoblin, and then I look behind myself, and I look back at the Aarakocra. Are you just... I, I'm confused. I don't know who you are. Are you speaking to me right now with that tone of voice? I didn't ask... I didn't ask for, like, your entire analysis of the situation. He, Why don't you move along with your books? How about that? The Aarakocra looks to you. I don't even know who you are. That's... That's exactly the point I'm making. I... Just keep going. <laughs> Whatever. I, like, that, no need to be so rude to this man. He didn't do anything to you. <sighs> Whatever. I don't care. You do what you want, but don't t say I didn't warn you. He walks off with his books. <laughs> and uh, I'm you can see the I'm hot goblin man is rubbing his hands, looking away in shame. I'm really sorry about that, sir. Um, that guy didn't really have the right to be as rude as he did. Did he He mention something about a pilgrim or I, uh, a pilgrim fee? Or? Yeah, I, I was, a, was a pilgrim uh, three decades past. Um, uh, the name's Augustine, Augustine Gerardo. Uh, you know, he, uh, you don't have to listen to that guy. You know, he he don't care much for me. But I I promise, if you, if you just with the coin that you, that you'll lend, I'll, I'll put it to good use. I, I I promise. And he holds one hand to his chest and the other hand up in a swear. Well, it's actually funny that you mentioned that, um, because I'm actually I'm uh, sort of a. Well, am a pilgrim myself, actually. I'm I, I'm Buck. Uh, oh, it's one of the pilgrims of Olympi. Oh, that's that, that that's wonderful. Then, then then you'll understand better than anyone. Understand? Uh, I seen th that that look in your eye. You're 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 one of the faithful. Yeah, you're you're looking for a bit of. He looks around, kind of left and right, and whispers, "A bit of good fortune." Uh, uh, I mean, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm looking for a bit of good fortune. And Something that definitely requires a bit of luck. <laughs> keep, keep talking. I, I, uh, <laughs> some, well, just, just the, the one coin, if, if, if you could, uh, and we can walk and talk, yeah? Yeah, I mean, I certainly can use maybe some, some advice on the old pilgrim front. I've got, my friends are actually out, but they 
I'd be amiss if I didn't get a little bit more information out of you. So yeah, let's let's walk and talk. It seemed like you were headed somewhere with that one gold coin anyway. Yeah, of course, of course, yes, yeah, yeah. And he kind of holds it on tight, uh, shakily. Uh, oh, do you give it to him, actually? Oh Yo, yeah, the coin, yeah. Okay, yes, he holds it tight to his chest. You can, he sighs a deep sigh of relief and he starts to walk kind of towards one of the edges, one of the platforms that leads to some of the air currents. And uh, he just looks around. <gasps> Make sure we weren't followed. I'll look around. And... Yeah, it doesn't seem like anyone's paying any attention to you. I, doubt it. I mean, I don't think we were followed. I don't see anybody around here. All right. Oh, lady, good lady, grant me your luck. He flips the coin into the air current. It flies up as it rings through the sky. He waits for almost a minute. And then he stomps his foot. Ah, rotten roots! What? Um, was that some kind of... What was the point of doing that? Uh, three decades ago, there used to be a well here, and 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 it was told to give good fortune, and and but they destroyed it uh, after I finished my pilgrimage, and I came here to check. They had destroyed it, ruined it, and replaced it with this nonsense piece of arcane foolery. Uh, but I was hoping, just hoping that maybe if I just tossed a coin in the same spot she would bless me like she did that day. <sighs> well, I, I hate to say this, old timer, but I don't think that... I don't think that she's coming back for either of us. Uh, no, no, not you too. Please, uh, please you, you must understand better than anyone. You're, you're familiar with the misfortune. Uh, she can sometimes be cruel, but I, I know ways to get on her good side. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was the same way um, for quite some time, but I think we've both been throwing coins in the air currents in one way or the other for, for long enough. Why, why don't we, you know, get out of here and find something else to, to do or to talk about? We're not, you're, believe me, you're not going to get anywhere by just throwing coins in the air and hoping and praying. Give me a persuasion check. Come on, Come Buck. On. Big money, no whammies. Okay, let me roll. Let's see. Can I use? Can I use? I have one more luck thing Go ahead. Uh, for today. It's my last one. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Eh, a little bit okay. better. You see the him number. checking the air current, looking back at you. Oh no, no, you don't understand, sir. I, I spent so much, I, I can't quit now. Uh, this could be my chance. Uh, the, the cleric uh, in, in the, the temple, Oscar, he don't judge me like the rest. I, I think that's a sign. Uh, please. Look, I, I, I get what you're, that you're hoping that things are gonna change for you if you just kinda let things go as they may. But I'm telling you right now, it's it's, it's not gonna work, all right? Just, I'm, I'm offering right now. I, we can use some of the coins that I got and instead of throwing them out in the wild open, we can get ourselves a drink and you can tell me more about your pilgrimage, something like that. Ah, if secret. you won't help me, then I have no business with you, non-believer. She'll smite you for such blasphemy, just you wait. Me though, I know my faith will pay off. It, ha it has to, it, it has to. He starts to wander a little bit. Spare change. A single coin, anything, starts calling out. Pilgrim of Satya, uh, Savior Quarencia, I, I do autographs. Anyone, please. Oh. I am in physical pain about this guy. That could have been you. <laughs> Why are all my individual adventures so sad? <laughs> it's like the universe is trying to tell me something. <laughs> Doesn't seem like any amount of convincing is going to get this man out of his yeah. stupor, sadly. He continues um, to wander, continuing to pay his dividends to Lady Luck as best he can. Um Whew. I'll take I'll take out a I'll take out a gold coin and like look at the airstream. Um I'll consider flipping the gold coin into the airstream to see if anything happens, and then I'm just gonna put the coin in my pocket and I guess try to find 
I don't know where else where to look. Um, I I'm guess. gonna give you. Uh, how about you give me a general perception check, and see. We'll consider that as like your exploring of the day to see if you're able to find any sign. Yeah. Unfortunately, oh. none. If they That's were fine. here, they left without a trace. Okay. All right. Well, um, with not much else to do, I mean, if that's gonna be my day, I guess I would we're just I could just head back to the inn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you spend the day wandering, looking, and asking questions, seeing if anyone may have seen the person that fits their description. Some of them claim to have seen them, but they don't seem to fit what you remember. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. All right, Fritz. You wanted to do a race, a street race. Yes. Yeah. I want to street race. Okay. So, uh, seeing as this place has a very prestigious university, there are students, and where there are students, there are troublemakers. Uh, <gasps> and being from a family of sailors, you know how to find the troublemakers. And the crew, <laughs> the crew of the Nado Hogir are definitely no snobs, and you know how to get up to mischief. And uh, you're able to suss out general areas you would expect them to be, uh, despite your unfamiliar unfamiliarity with Aguna as a whole. Uh, putting yourself in the shoes of the rowdy sailors in Satya, of which you grew up with, uh, you play, replace the docks and the seawater with the jumping platforms and the air currents, and it almost seems like home to you. Uh, and following your instincts, you do find some faint banter down a cliffside walkway. And following the noise, you do see a few mages of Aguna's Academy laughing and pushing and shoving, a couple of them kneeling before getting ready to leap off the platform into an air current before them. Uh, and then a countdown, and then cheering as two of them jump off, zip into the current, and are carried away, uh, followed by a little bird familiar, as the rest kind of seem to be watching from an illusory display on, on a piece of parchment to catch the race remotely. You found your street race. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hop up and watch this one race that's going first. Okay, you see that it is between an elven boy and a young Kenku. They're flying through, uh, kind of pushing and shoving each other back and forth. It seems as though they're having a very fun time. A few simple spells are slung every now and then, mostly cantrips like a prestidigitation to sort of like throw dirt mm. at one's face or whatever. Uh, it seems as though they're racing pretty dirty. Uh, but eventually, they come all the way back, and the Kenku is the one that lands first, uh, giving a, a kind of ironic bow to the cheering crowd as the elf stumbles over and everyone just kind of laughs, pats him on the back, and um, they all kind of tease him every now and then. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to turn to the person next to me and be like, they sure play fun, don't they? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, are you new? I don't recognize you. Oh, yeah, I hail from, funny enough, the complete opposite of here, the water. <laughs> oh, are you a transfer student? No. Do oh. I, am I student age? Well, Did just... Fritz get an education? <laughs> I would <laughs> say so. Fritz, Fritz was you were taught by the sea. I'll, I'll, I'll let you decide that. I'll let you decide. Fritz uh, was homeschooled. Satya, Satya does have public education available, um, and mm -hmm. you know you would have been able to attend if, uh, like, given the ch the chance to. Um, and... I like the idea they were homeschooled because it took <laughs> them a right. while to come out their shell. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I was done with school a while ago. Oh, wow, what'd you study? Uh, well, you know, the, the general stuff you do and then to get a passing grade and then you go on about your day. As you I didn't say do this, any of that higher education. Hearing this, the Kenku winner of the race kind of walks up. What they mean is they flunked out. And you can see <gasps> this very kind of upright, hmm. kind of early 20s-ish uh, Kenku, who's wearing a very regal sort of student's uniform with sort of a uh, light blue cyan sash across his chest. And uh, you see, you hear a few of the crowd going, ooh. And there he is. Mm -hmm. I didn't flunk out, I started a business. Mm. <laughs> what have you got to your name? Oh, well. 
as you can see by the sash here, I am top of the class, and I'm pretty sure that I will be next in line to be dragon. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> and how much debt did that put you in? <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> debt? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, debt. Oh, you're funny. Oh, don't tell me. Oh, you have to buy your own things? <laughs> oh, 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 that's... Oh, that's funnier. That's rich. That's rich. Oh, wait. No, you're not. <laughs> and ah. you can see the students behind him are like, yeah, cool. Like, they're trying yeah. to be his hype men. Yeah. I don't know. I find there's a lot of enjoyment in making your own coin and spending it how you want. Don't have to worry on your trust fund. <sighs> and then you can see a bit of them <laughs> chuckling behind him. So. But I admire your brain. Something I... Can't say I do have. I'll give you that. I'm playing fair. Mm, so you do have some humility. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not a savage. <laughs> oh. Fierce is having like doing this very playfully, but they might not be taking it that way. <laughs> so, you say you come from across the water. Mm -hmm. the water. Mm -hmm. So that means. <gasps> You're from Sachia. Yeah. Oh, I'll point I... some of the boats down there. Oh, I thought I smelled the sea salts or something else. Mm. It'd be quite good for your feathers. <laughs> mm, sure. Is there a reason you're here? Well, it looked fun. Fun? Yeah. It is you're not... racing and playing a little bit fun. It's not, oh, you, it is a test of skill and takes a lot of practice, okay? It's not just fun, it is a practice for when we reach our higher education. It is a very, very useful skill that is going to be used in, I don't even have to know how to explain it to you. <laughs> Can't be that smart. From the sounds of it, you're explaining my fun, racing. Fine. Maybe we could see. Back where, back where I'm from, I'm the fastest bird. <laughs> also, the only bird. Oh, well, then they must not have that many birds where you're from. <laughs> the fastest bird. Oh. Mm. Mm, gets the job done. Well, then, if you think it's so fun, <laughs> how about a little wager, then? <gasps> you want to challenge me? <laughs> Far enough. Oh, you're, you're in. approaching me. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's the least I could do to show you just a little bit of Aguna's welcomingness. Ah, uh, I'm gonna bow to them like, thank you for your hospitality then. <laughs> I, I'm loving this, Fritz gets to be a little shit. You can see that a few of the, uh, the students behind him are like whispering and chuckling and he's like, hey, shut up! So, you two, he uh, goes to the platform, gets into a kneeling position, and waits for you to step up by his side. I'm not gonna lean, I'm just standing next to him. I'm like, why are you positioning like that? Why is <laughs> wow, they fly really different in the sea salt, don't they? The winds are quite strong down there. Are you sure you'd be able to handle them? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> and then. The bird familiar flaps in front of you. It glows red, orange, yellow, green, and you lift off. Yeah. Woohoo! So can I do can I do the dead pigeon drop? You know the like the one that just jumps and it doesn't look like they're flying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, you can. Into the air current, and I'm gonna need you to make me an acrobatics check. Okay. Smoke this bird. Don't don't Ooh. curse the rolls. Okay, you said smoke, and I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you immediately drop into the air current, and your like, kind of not even flapping motion, shoots you through the air, and it feels natural. You've never been in any of these air currents before, but it's almost like you've done this before. And not just the regular flying either. It feels as though the winds are helping you. 
something that you've Ooh. never gotten the chance to experience, having to battle them, sailing from Satya mm. to Nuba Sky back and forth. And Ace, uh, as uh, he would be called by one of the students I'd, I'd never mentioned, his <laughs> name is Ace, mm. uh, noticing you catching speed, and he's like, yeah, something was in my eye, and he tries to flap. <laughs> my dad works at Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> Control is broken. This is bullshit. So you get a quarter through the current, and uh, you can see that there is a familiar somewhere along the way, kind of pointing in a direction for you to leap from one current to another. You can uh, mm -hmm. make a skill check of your choice that feel you feel like would be useful in making that leap. Skill Whether it be check. acrobatics, mm -hmm. athletics, maybe something wisdom related, but this is uh, not going to I'll be do... an easy jump. Acrobatics again. Another acrobatics, okay. All right, you oh. leap from one current to the other, making a very sharp turn around a tower. As uh, you see, there are a few students that uh, see you rush by and hear them whooping and hollering at you. And uh, Ace tries to do the same thing. Let's see how he does. Ooh, he like tries to do your same maneuver, kind of bashes into one of the pillars of the uh, oh. tower, and he goes, ah, fuck, and like kind of <laughs> spins a little bit. He does make it to the new current that you're in, but you can see he's lost a little okay. bit of control and is like spinning wildly. Oh. Now, as you're flying through- I'm worried about him. <laughs> as you're flying through, you do see that there are some Aguna guards that spot you as you fly Gosh. past, and they're like, hey, kids, stop that. And then you see that he puts his uh, fingers up to his ear. He seems to be sending something to another one of the guards. And you can see that some of the guards, uh, kind of along the path, are attempting to stop you. They're going to try and use a spell. So I'm going to need you to make a wisdom saving throw. He's or a something, nasty cheater. So, something else, if you uh, so wish to. Uh, you can see that it seems they're trying to put up some sort of arcane net or wall to try and trap you. I see. What so I can either do a wisdom saving throw or something else you said. Yeah, something else. If you feel like you have any spell that might help with this or some I other... I do. I have an idea and I want to know what you think. Okay, let's hear it. <laughs> um, can I use Gust of Winds to propel myself into a different lane? <gasps> Ooh. Ooh, yes, you may. Okay. First time I'm mm. using it to propel myself yeah. <laughs> instead of somewhere else. I would say give me a dexterity check to see your aim because you do know that the right. other lane has some other people in them as well. See if you're yeah, able to I don't hurt him. not run into them. <laughs> uh, Ooh. You, uh, <laughs> you gust I a bit. I crash a bit. And you, <laughs> it was a bit too quick. <laughs> you kind of shoot yourself out of the current that you're in into the air current next to you where there is uh, seems to be like a an elderly woman who's got like some shopping oh. baskets. Oh, God. Uh, oh no. <laughs> you, no. You kind of bump into her and boosh, all of her contents go flying into the current. Oh my goodness. No. But you are in the other current away from the net and uh, you can see Ace just goes, oh no, 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 no. And he leaps out of the current oh, downwards onto the ground and he skids across the kind of cobblestone street. <laughs> he avoids the net as well, but he looks a little worse for wear. And he starts running on foot. <laughs> okay. Uh, You're about three you know quarters what? I'll through take the a, route. I'll take a penalty. I want to help this lady. I, I caused this issue. I'm going to fix it. <gasps> Secret okay, what are you going to try and do? Um... So her groceries are just in the wind current, right? Yeah, they're all over the place, and you can see that she's, like, trying to struggle to reach for them as they're kind of floating around as if they were in zero-G. I'm going to grab the ones she can't. Okay, yeah. You're, I would I say no of, check like, for that. Since I told are... her to, like, open her bag, and I'm, like, throwing them in. <laughs> <laughs> and she just uh, kind of waves, Oh, thank you, lassie. So sorry, I gotta go. <laughs> And by about now, you're about three quarters of the way through the air current. And you can see that Ace is trying to outrun some of the guards. And uh, he is oh. panting. He's like, oh, uh, uh. he is on his way to another <laughs> leap off point, but the guards are catching up to him. And you are nearly Ooh. there. You have a choice. You can win the race or you can try and help Ace. 
I'm gonna help him. It's not fun if your opponent isn't racing you. Can I try to swoop down and basically claw grab him? <laughs> you <laughs> most certainly can. You can give me another acrobatics or athletics. Be your choice. Uh, Should have been a primo moment for a it's not, dirt it's taste, It's not idiot. fun. Oh, we might both get caught. It's not fun <laughs> if like your opponent isn't racing. <laughs> okay, let's see if he's able to help at all. Wait, do I have an inspiration? I, no, I don't. <laughs> okay. He is going to attempt to cast a spell on you to try and help. You can see he pulls out his wand. Huh, huh, come on, come on, come on. And he casts it. It goes a little bit wide and just bashes into a building. You can hear someone go, what the heck? Whoa, whoa, whoa. And uh, you can see just like some long arms just stretch out from a window. Huh? 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 What, what happened? Oh. <laughs> you missed. Oh. Brace for impact. <laughs> and you run, bash into him. You stumble all just over into a pile of dirt. And the guards surround you, cross their arms. And Ace just goes, oh, shit. Admin Biscuris is going to kill us. Uh, and, I'm happy uh, to get us out of this. It's you okay. hear... A very, f a, a uh, kind of very sophisticated sounding womanly voice uh, respond to that comment. Oh, you know me so well, Mr. Boli uh, Bolivar. And you can see the guards part and you can see the admin of which he mentioned. Uh, very tall, kind of uh, with a few wrinkles, Aarakocra woman with dull brown feathers dotted with dark spots. Uh, oh, no. She wears a red <laughs> red robe with uh, a patch seal indicating her rack, uh, rank as an admin of the library. And on her nose, it's a, a maroon set of glasses. But you, you are not known to me, though you do seem familiar. You've not been sneaking out of class, have you? And you see this Harpykin Arakakura. <clears throat> Uh, I, well, Fritz doesn't know them, so they're just like, I don't go to class here. Uh, I guess I'll like get up and brush myself and try to help Ace up. Uh, uh, if it makes any of the situation better, I am a pilgrim. A pilgrim? She lowers work. her glasses, <laughs> leans down yeah. to inspect you. And while she's doing I... this, Ace attempts to try and sneak away. She grabs him by the collar. <laughs> <laughs> you, I will deal with. Oh, it, w it was me who antagonized them. I, please to be nicer to them. No, I know, Mr. Bolivar. This is not the first time he's tried to use the currents as a racing track. <sighs> Sorry, Ace, I tried. <laughs> and seeing as you, you are pilgrim, you must be a foreigner and you don't understand the rules and regulations around here, so I can give you the grace, the benefit of the doubt, as it were. You, though, Mr. That Bolivar. That just feels unfair. <laughs> Mr. Bolivar, you will report yourself to Admin Diego by the end of the day about what you did today, and I will check in with him to see if your story lines up with mine. Are we clear? And Ace kind of stammers a bit. Uh, but you, uh, but, uh, but I, uh, but they. Yes, Admin. <laughs> And he just sh slumps his shoulders. And as he's walking away, he kind of turns. Thanks for trying. We'll race again sometime. <laughs> In front of the admin. Yeah, the admin, the admin waves to him. No, you won't. Spoil sport. Now then, you say you are a pilgrim, yes? It's not very responsible of you to be taking part in such ridiculous activities. Don't you have to be somewhere it's... getting a certain heart? You said pilgrimaging had to be responsible. Well, We're putting I... our lives on the line. Doesn't sound very responsible to me. Considering that it has to do with the betterment of the entirety of the kingdom, I think you would have to be very responsible. Clearly. Hmm? I don't know. I beg to differ. I've done some hmm. pretty irresponsible things, but it's worked out. Gosh, you sound just like Wait. She <laughs> leans down to inspect you. I'm just like, why is this lady getting so close? <laughs> what are you doing? 
are you the Strapios? Ah, oh. uh, hmm? please don't miss it. <laughs> <sighs> she says, well, technically, yes and no, it's a long story. So that's what happened to you. <laughs> come, come, we've got to catch up. Gods, you may be dismissed. I've got a uh, student that I was trying to apprehend. And the guards leave. Now then, how about we catch up? Uh, I... Oh, my apologies. I am Lofarina Biskires. I am your birth mother. Ah, uh, this again. <laughs> I take it you've already met with Astrapio. Uh, sure, let's catch up. Truly one of the funniest things you could say to the sudden parent reveal. <laughs> Not this again. She... Uh, well, I'm just gonna... You know what? I'm gonna be snarky. Let's hope you're not as... Uh, how, do I, uh, how do I say this nicely? <laughs> um... Cowardly is him. <laughs> And uh, so you guys walk and talk. She starts to lead you to uh, kind of her study. And as you walk and talk, ah, yes, your father, Strapio. No, oh, what a washed up nothing he was. And good to see nothing's changed. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> <laughs> oh, huh? I see where I get my attitude. <laughs> your parents stink. <laughs> it's like you guys have never been part of a family. You lost the parent lottery this twice over. But Mildrum, <laughs> that is incredibly impressive. Well done. Oh, God. Quite the status, and I'm sure it's allowed you to make many great memories on your journey. Hmm. Been pretty fun. Well, then. Why do you ask? Well, I've just taken an interest. Um, <laughs> now. Now that it's convenient, and you're grown up, and I don't need to change <laughs> diapers and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's very impressive. I didn't think Astrapio had it in him to... What, what does Astrapio have to do with me being a pilgrim? Well, it's very impressive that you became a pilgrim, especially with how incompetent he was at raising you. Ooh. Oh! You don't know. <laughs> no, I don't keep up with... So they, like, like smirk to themselves. <laughs> when was the last time you saw Astrapio? Oh, let's see. Um, only a little bit before our little splitting. Uh, you couldn't have been more than, say... Well, I don't actually know how old you were. <laughs> <laughs> about four. Father of the year! <laughs> hmm. I was about four. Oh, are you? You seemed so much smaller. Hmm. Funny story. Ah, uh, I think you'll find this one hilarious. Ah, uh, <laughs> that was the last time I saw him too. Ah, oh, interesting. <laughs> Fascinating. It is quite a shame, Astrapio. <laughs> What's become of him? God, do I know? You think I have a relationship with a guy I haven't? I've only talked to once since I was four? Oh, come now. You've become pilgrim. You haven't traveled across the world or anything. Met him. I hear he's an officiate of Politrios now. I had the pleasure of meeting him, yes. Um, it's, it's hard to say anything about someone you don't really know. Um, that is a shame. He was such a passionate romantic when we were first dating. I do not need to know. Yeah, <laughs> 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 he, uh, he is trying though. I'll give him that. Uh, well, he did make me feel on top of the world. House. I even started to believe some of that poetic nonsense he was spouting at me to the point I had the goal to agree to marry him. But what are you going to do? It's good that he can at least hold a job now. All that time. When we first had you spouting nonsense about the toll of caretaking and the crying, he even decided to quit his simple job. He was so incompetent. Pathetic, oh, really. No. And he had the nerve to ask me for assistance, knowing how important my work was. Oh. Huh. <laughs> oh, here we are, down here. This is my study, this tower right here. 
and you can see she has led you to a very large tower kind of in the mm. midst right next to the library wow corner office mm. so this is what was important yes i wanted oh. to show you inside come okay fuck i wish Lyra was there <laughs> <laughs> Your mother would not survive our encounter if Layra was there. <laughs> so and it hops in. You head on inside. She leads you up a spiral staircase. Now I couldn't afford to take time away. The lords needed me, and so they tasked me with a very, very important mission that might correct the course of the entire kingdom. Now you, being pilgrim, I feel. Okay, sharing this week with you, as well as the fact that you are my daughter, after all, and you've made it this far, I think you've earned it. We are on the cusp of finding a cure to the blot for good. Oh. Do we, should we, you know, cast a silent spell? This seems quite important. Oh, don't worry. I think this news is good if it gets out. The blot has been a thorn in our side for so many centuries. I... Uh, um... Hmm. I don't mind if this story leaks. I think some good news is exactly what we need now. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? I... I just met you, right? Um... And... You have absolutely no reason to trust me. Uh... But you do have reason to trust my experience, correct? Well, I guess that depends. Please don't let this get out right away. All right, very well. I wasn't planning on exactly sharing it to the world. I just don't see the need of <laughs> silencing this My mother world. doesn't die! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are no negative consequences to telling the entire world that we're curing the blood! <laughs> yes, okay. Well, please, uh, once things are secure, tell me, uh... Really, you do not want prying ears on this situation. Uh, things are dire out there. Mm. It really is ironic. Honestly, I guess we should thank Estrapio. Because, you know, if it weren't for him taking you off my hands, I wouldn't have been able to do this. <laughs> what a I would like to Ooh. not... <laughs> I would rather we thank my father, Dozin, but... No. What makes you feel better? Oh my god. Whatever, whatever for? It was my decision to uh, separate with Estrapio. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And he was the one who raised a pilgrim. Yes, but he wouldn't have raised you had I not been the one to cut Estrapio out of my life. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't have these achievements unless the hardship I went through. But imagine what I could have done with a bit more support. Well, I think I contributed quite a bit as a result of my advice to Estrapio to go and get his own job and do his own thing. He gave you a way to better care, who raised you to be a well enough uh, to become a I'm going to... <laughs> Fritz is going to slam their head on, ha like, hand on one of the desks Ooh. and be like, don't take this away from me. Well, I just think it's a little unfair to not attribute some of the credit to me. <laughs> I would like to hold a cordial relationship with you because of the situation between the pilgrims and this town. But I will not hesitate to let you know how I feel if you continue. So, could we kindly, as scholar to scholar, make this a little less personal? I don't see where the frustration comes from. I'm not making anything personal. I'm just stating the fact. I told Estrapio that if he couldn't take care of a baby, he should probably reconsider being a father. It's good to see that my words reached him. You should reconsider calling yourself my mother. Her eyes narrow a bit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry enough, bitch. My name's Fritz. I am a pilgrim of Satya. Now, would you like to correct how you address me? Of course, Fritz. Thank I you. Apologize. I apologize, I meant no offense or anything that I said. 
and it was all in praise, I promise you. I appreciate it, but your words are honeyed. They're not something I've seeked for a very long time. Now, I will say it is quite nice for my ego for someone of how high you've gotten to praise me, but I do not want it coming from someone who calls themselves my mother. Very well. Thank you. Now the blot, how do we fix it? <laughs> it's like instantly very cheery. <laughs> well, I, along with the other lords, have been collaborating in creating a, con a concoction that can be distributed to the other provinces, dispelled into the sky, possibly into some of the clouds, to cause a weathering storm of rain that will get rid of all instances of blot. That sounds fantastic. We can redirect these storms wherever they need be. If we get report of a blot, we can cause it to rain upon them, destroying them for good unlike how we've been dealing with them before with swords and sorcery only for them to recover and reform elsewhere this will destroy them permanently that sounds like a really good idea um oh, i wish you knew more oh, i wish i could share more that's already overstepping the line seeing as a task, and if I can get the proper permissions to give you a sample to bring to Quarancy itself. But that will require some time. I'll have to communicate with the, with the Lord, the Lords, and see if I can get those permissions. I think this could work very well. You know, getting rid of the blood is, would kind of mean we don't have to do this. Um, and also means so many lives to be lost. But this could work. It's like a backup plan. I'm glad you see it that way. Hmm. So could you get us the the sample? Not yet, but seeing <gasps> as you are in the work of delivering, I do have a missive I wish for you to give to a colleague that is deep in a lower level of the library, about Mm, 50 floors down, I believe he should be now. Uh, if you could bring this mm -hmm. to Admin Diego, whenever you get the chance. I do have mm -hmm. something baking right now that I do have to attend to. So, if you could bring this to him, I would be very thankful. I can do that with a catch. Very well. Could I get a library card? Do you not have one already? It should have been issued to you. Well, I hate to pull this card. <clears throat> Seeming we are pilgrims and outsiders, <laughs> people are a little worried about the information we could find, but as seeming you understand, uh, maybe because the same blood is flowing through us, <laughs> that we have a passion for fixing this. And I would need more access to better information. Give me... Your choice of persuasion, nature, history. Oh, I'm not very smart. Um, persuasion. It's basically choosing what kind of argument nature, you're making for her. <sighs> this is the best I got. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> She's desperate to have a daughter. It's the power of mom <laughs> guilt. <laughs> Take that, mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very well then. I guess that logic sounds... Very well. If you'll give me a moment. She turns around. She kind of puts finger to her ear. Has a little sending. Very good, thank you. And she takes out a staff. Kind of uh, stomps it on the floor a couple of times conjures a little uh, observer, like a observer familiar. Now, if you could mm -hmm. stand there and pose for a picture, we do have to do a new one. Okay, I'll, I'll look normal for this. <laughs> <laughs> the observer flashes and transforms into a little card spangled with like little, it's holographic. So whenever you uh, like look around the card, it like changes colors and it allows yeah. you to reach the 30th floor of Aguna's Grand Library. 
All right, I'm gonna give her my old one. Be like, I don't need this anymore. <laughs> really, not even a, a souvenir? I have this one. All right. Some people like to look. When you like a souvenir them. from me, your beloved. <laughs> <laughs> She's saying that sarcastically. Ooh. Oh, actually, as a, as a matter of fact, now that you mention it, I did want to. <laughs> ask you about uh, some good word that you could put in at Politrios after all this is done. Uh, there is a colleague there that is studying a few things about the mechanical side of arcane industry, and I would like to get a bit of his studies. She's networking with you. <laughs> yeah, we're networking. Devastated. I'll see what I can do. All right, then. Um, I guess I'll go deliver. Oh, right, the, the note, the thing. Of course, thank you. <laughs> right, uh, Fritz hops up onto the window. I'm not going through the door, I'm being dramatic here. And goes, It was surprisingly pleasant to talk with you. Um, but if you're so good at arcane, technically that's part of mine, right? <laughs> she giggles, trying to see if they realize how flawed their logic is. <laughs> she lifts one finger, she's about to say something. Uh, hmm. <laughs> she seems to hesitate to find the right words. Yeah, maybe we'll talk again. Bye! Just dashes out the window. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I got a golden ticket. I got a golden ticket. Ignoring all the mother trauma. I got a golden ticket. <laughs> for, for the benefit of the audience, uh, and off screen, not that Fritz would know this, as Fritz leaps out the window, Administrator uh, Lafarina just goes back to her studies, kind of like checking in on her cauldron of what she is brewing. Whispers to herself, Fritz, Fritz. She shakes her head. What a strange name. <sighs> Does she not even know my name? Why is she like this? No. She wants to uh, use For the, uh, another benefit of the audience, <laughs> she never mentioned your name once. Until oh. you presented it to her. <laughs> so she didn't know. Oh, that's... Oh, that means... A... Wait, did Estrapio name me then? Okay. Did Dozen name you? Oh, wait, no. no. Phelan is not Dozen's type. No. Fritz is... <laughs> More what Dozen calls him. <laughs> and lastly... God we damn. We will end off the session. Lyra. <clears throat> Howdy. Let's go, Lyra. You are just I got trying us to be knowledge. an upstanding <laughs> citizen, yes? An upstanding yeah, yeah. Program. I'm just looking around, admiring this great city, trying to figure out how many parts of it are structurally sustained <laughs> only by the life tree that might need to explode. Uh, if you would like to take a closer look and study, you can give me your choice of arcana, history, or nature. Oh, please let me do nature. That would be so lovely. Since you get to see it up close and in such virility that you've never seen before. Hot diggity. Uh, yeah, I'll take a crack at a nature check. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Dice Ooh. are fire tonight. All right. Is there any information in, like, specifically that you would like to know, or you just want to know some, like, general stuff? Um... I think I'm broadly curious about uh, how vital the um, the life tree growing up through the city is, and I'm more recently curious about like how long has it been like this? Uh, like, is this a does it seem to have been a more recent change? Uh, I don't want to metagame, but the reference that hob uh, the hobgoblin made to like there used to be a well here made me think like oh wait no it would be an interesting question to ask how long has the city been like this mm -hmm. uh what did they do to shape it like this you know how sustainable is it stuff like that would you like to discern that yourself or would you also like to uh add the assistance of the locals by asking them those things as well i think i will mostly like to try and discern that by myself because i have a feeling that it falls into the category of a suspicious question for me to be asking <laughs> uh right. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, Especially what you can discern might be observing. with a 22 is mm -hmm. that these roots grow pretty quickly. And just a few, like, just studying them and seeing kind of, I don't know, tree stretch marks. I don't exactly know how botany works. But um, <laughs> that uh, they grow at a decent rate um, to the point uh, where, as you could probably surmise, that restructuring in Aguna happens very frequently 
to mm. adjust for the roots since um, it seems as though the city is built around the roots rather than the other way around where they try to push the roots away. Um, as a result, a lot of the structural integrity is actually not so dense. Like a decent siege of the city could probably take it down if they had strong enough weapons. And that is a matter of fact that these simpler materials are easier to mold and maneuver with magic. Um, mm. Thankfully, they so are. So they've protected. essentially sacrificed integrity for maneuverability. Yes. Yeah. And you know that this is not a big concern thanks to the life tree, like this area of the life tree holding things up with this aerial magic. So they don't need wow. it to be super duper strong in foundation thanks to the tree holding everything up essentially. Oh, this place is a house of cards. Why do you like <laughs> this? Ah. You can tell that the baser part of the roots, as might seem obvious, are older than the higher parts. But uh, judging by your estimations, like a single branch of the roots, or, or just branch in general, could grow like a, a story uh, of a building in maybe like two, three years. Wow. Oh boy. Okay, that's fascinating. Um, does it look like the roots have been in any way purposefully reshaped anywhere, or have they just been kind of taking it as it comes? Because I know that like tampering with the tree is like a capital offense, but I don't know if wizards get special permission for stuff. You do see certain marks in the tree that seem like almost scarred over, but little tiny marks, perhaps samples being taken by some of the uh, scholars in Aguna for study, but nothing like significant to try and push it out of the way. They haven't made anything like the tree equivalent of a levee, for example. They mostly mm -hmm. let it grow where it grows and only taking small samples to study. Oh, that makes sense. Um, hmm, let's see. Well, that's extremely alarming for a number of reasons. Um, let's see. <sighs> I guess, hypothetical thought experiment. Mm -hmm. What would happen to this place if the tree, like, like, I'm, like, mentally thinking, like, okay, if the tree stays in place but dies and slowly crumbles, this place is malleable. Maybe they could, like, you know, settle it, set everything down gently over the course of a few years or something like that. But, like, what happens if what happens if something really drastic happens to the tree? Because I don't know what the Prabhath is planning, and I don't know if we'd be able to stop it if it was particularly destructive. So, like, how fucked is this place? <laughs> I will if ask you to happens. give me a straight intelligence check to see if you oh. can hypothesize something. Great. Uh, wait, that's not right. Uh, no, those are saves. Oh, there it is. No, no. Okay. No. Oh, are you a wisdom caster? <laughs> yeah, of course I'm a wisdom yeah. caster. <laughs> Unfortunately, oh, I'm just gonna any, speak to this tree real quick. <laughs> any guesses or hypotheses are going to be reliant on you, the player, with that role. Great, thanks, Lyra. Okay. Um. Hmm. Well, I guess secondary question that's been interesting me, how's the wind work around here? Because it doesn't okay. seem like it follows so much from the trees. Uh, no, it doesn't follow the tree, actually. Observing it, you can see that they work in similar kind of uh, like branching veins throughout, and, and the various different air currents seem to have like people checking in on them every now and then. You do see like uh, certain people in uniform that seem to have like raven feathered cloaks coming in perhaps maintenance people from what you can guess so huh. perhaps to check maybe like weather people almost like checking to see where they're heading where they're moving because uh as what you can surmise is that just like the tree these air currents do also morph and change over time as well hmm. independent of the uh, of the roots Huh. As for where their origin point is, it's hard to tell since they seem to originate deep below the city and below the roots where sun doesn't reach. Yeah, I suppose my third question is what the hell is this city sitting on? Um, hmm. There are the odd, like, rocky cliff face every now and then, but as for, like, a like single large foundation, it doesn't seem like there is one. Huh. All right, I might approach city, one you... of them 
uh, Raven Wind Maintenance people because I have follow-up questions. Ah, you're going to want to talk with some of the maintenance folk. Yeah. Okay, all right. So, you walk around. Does one of them have a portrait? Uh, as a matter of fact... <laughs> oh. Okay, you track down one of the maintenance folk who seems to be taking notes. He's got a clipboard. He looks to be an elven man. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. An elven man with thick dreads and some heavy layered mage robes underneath the uh, feathered kind of cloak. And uh, he notices your kind of inquisitive uh, walk towards him. And mm -hmm. he gives you a little bow. Hello, madam. Is there any way I can assist you today? Uh, yes, I'm sorry for the terribly touristy question, I'm sure, but I've just been fascinated by these wind currents. I, they can't possibly be natural, can they? As a matter of fact, they are. They uh, originate from the tree deep below the ground underneath the valley that sits underneath Aguna. The tree? Yes, indeed. Uh, most of the other provinces uh, get some form of uh, elemental power of some sort, usually arcanery or some kind from the tree. Uh, Politrios has its water, Trevisetta has its magma, and uh, here we have air power. My goodness, I had never considered that that was caused by the tree. That's fascinating. Indeed, and I believe south of Nuba Sky as well, there are a, a bevy of regrowing minerals. Oh, of course. Huh. Well, this must make transit around this city extremely convenient, but has it always been like this? Uh, as far as the kingdoms have been around, yes, 300 years. Although, uh, only the past 200 have it have we really started to nail the transportation. It took a lot of finagling. Really? I imagine failed experiments must have been rather devastating. Yes, uh, regulations written in blood, as it were. Mm. But that is why I take pride in what I do. Uh, it's although it can be fun whisking from current to current I uh, I also enjoy it whenever one jumps into the current and has a mundane face they have nothing to worry about and that lets me know that I've done my job right are the winds particularly unreliable mm, not for the past century no we've luckily been very long without an accident at least no accidents by the currents themselves some of the uh, ruffians of the student body tend to get a little antsy and sometimes oh. mess where things shouldn't be messed with and that can ah. often cause we have regulations for a reason as you probably know yes thankfully i don't know anybody who would eventually <laughs> do anything <laughs> foolish in that regard uh <laughs> you said things changed within the last century was there some sort of uh, was it a matter of more safety precautions, a better understanding of the winds themselves? Definitely a better understanding, yes. Uh, better understanding of the tree. Only a century ago were we actually allowed to take samples from Quarencia in order to study its effects. And that has contributed to our studies and our understanding of the tree tenfold. Really? That makes sense, I suppose. Yes, as a, as a steward of nature, it can be difficult to wrangle with that which we are not allowed to understand, but... But it sounds like the city has become significantly safer since then. Although I must wonder how it was constructed in the first place if, if the wind has been such a chaotic element since the very foundation of it. Oh, well, we did use quite a bit of sturdier material before. Uh, but once we understood the winds better, and the roots for that matter, not wanting to mess with their positioning uh, out of fear that it might affect the wind currents, We've done more malleable materials since, but uh, before that, definitely more traditional structures built out of metal and steel and rock formed more physically as uh, we also came to understand that uh, getting too close to the roots of the tree can have interesting effects on spellcasting. Really? Yes. It might be because of the roots being so exposed here that uh, it seems a problem unique to Aguna, but thankfully we are so high suspended up in the air that uh, thankfully that is not a problem anymore. 
Yes, I was rather wondering about that. The foundations of the city seem strangely not very foundational. <laughs> no, but the irony, luckily, that uh, the further away we are from the ground roots, the uh, more stable the magic becomes. Interesting. I... I'm sorry, I'm sure my curiosity is a very unwise reflex, but as no, a spellcaster with a focus on nature, I, I can't help but wonder what it must be like down there. I'm always thankful that anyone takes any interest. Most people, they just see it as a part of everyday life, and they forget the miracle that it is, that it's here to help us every day. But, Goodness, uh, I can't imagine. There have been a few expeditions down below, but uh, they are very hit deep in secrecy, as uh, uh, most of the... Uh, official Alinthi government likes to keep a lot of it, just in case it falls into the wrong hands. Not oh, that I, I would voluntarily go down there myself, of course. Yes, I'm sure it would be quite per perilous, although... Yes, you're right, it would be a terrible idea. Well, if that will be all, I, I do need to go check some of the other, other currents. I do thank you yes, for taking I... an interest in my work. Of course, I'm terribly sorry for the intrusion. Not at all. You have a wonderful day, madam. Yes, uh, you as well. Um, so I would like to find some kind of chill little park, make friends with a bird, and use beast sense to see through its eyes as I fly under the city. <laughs> okay. I'm so curious. <laughs> All right. Beast sense flying under the city. Yes, I'm going to just put this sucker in v, uh, VTT and I can cast it ritually because I got a feat that lets me ritual cast things now. Mm. Okay, and it has an unlimited range? Uh, seems to. I have to, yeah, unless I use my action to return to my normal senses, I just see through the beast's eyes for uh, concentration up to an hour. Okay. So, seeing through the beast's eyes flying down to the base of the valley where the arcanery is the strongest, where the roots are exposed right out of the ground. Your vision through the bird actually jitters and stutters as if you have a bad connection. Oh. Uh, but you are still able to glean enough information as the bird lands perched on one of the roots deep miles below the city. And you can see that some of these roots, they look a little familiar, like certain roots that you've seen in a certain ruins. Hmm. Some of them, almost as though the roots have been carved into faces. Only oh they weren't God. carved. <laughs> okay, cool, 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 cool. Oh, no. <laughs> there are faces in the fucking tree? Well, it's because there's people in the tree. I know, the, but the people, like the Probably this is gonna have a conniption. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Cool. 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 Um, I guess I, my arcana is garbage, but can I try and make some kind of inference about why the tree roots have like what magic radiation or whatever? Yup. <laughs> All right. Let me make that tasty skill check. I guess. Hit. <laughs> come on, baby. Oh, come on, buddy. Mm. I guess that twenty-two was was too good. Everything's balancing out. Um, yeah, no, it's hard to discern why. All right. This, yeah, arcane I guess my guess radiation. is just oh, the, the tree is really magical. So down here is extra magical, potentially hazardously so. Um, hmm. So so bad. This is the worst trolley problem. Um, I will say, this is probably a good chance to go to... I, I said this would be the last one, but seeing as we have a little bit of time left, we're going to go back to Word. We're going to leave Lara off there, if that's all right. Yeah, just vibe and looking through a bird's eyes for a little while. And we're going to go back to Word for the actual final little thing. Word, <laughs> uh, are you up to anything in particular after you've grabbed the note and key from the lockbox? So I'll take that back to the... My, my good friend's little apartment that they're hanging out in. Mm -hmm. I'll drop that off there. Right, and right. then I'll probably just go and snag food in the market district. Mm, okay. Snag. You go to try and get some food in the market district, and you hear kind of someone 
shouting, shouting. It, it, it's gone. Uh, it was here just a moment ago. It's gone. Come on, guards, please. There's some way you can track it, right? And the guards ask him for a description. It seems as though some sort of salesperson has lost a very valuable item. Hey, friend, what are you missing? Oh, oh, uh, good sir. Uh, perhaps you could help with these useless guards. They don't do anything around here. It is a very, very special item to me. It is a book of uh, studies, and it has, uh, it's first edition, actually, uh, studies about uh, great locations on vacation to see some beautiful scenery across Alinthi. It was a first edition signed by the author. It has beautiful pictures, beautiful in illustrations inside, and no one seems to care that it's gone. Somebody stole your adventure locations booklet. Yes! Quite a tragedy. Hmm. What did it look like? Well, and he gives you a description. It has a nice uh, kind of Bob Ross style cover. Well, we'll say that. <laughs> yeah. It... I will use my second second level spell slot of the day and cast Locate Object. Okay. <laughs> you cast Locate Object, you know exactly where it is. Oh. And it's actually not far. Um, it's actually in a tavern nearby. And yeah, you, you know its location. All right. I'll get that and I'll get it back to you. Lickety split or whatever local people say. Of like course, me. of course. Oh, and, and your name, sir. May I get your name? <laughs> Jumbus Malaya. Oh, thank you, Mr. <laughs> Jumbus. <laughs> I'm writing it down so it for when you forget it. <laughs> yeah. I got it. Jumbus Malaya. Like Jambalaya. The there man you go. with a thousand names. <laughs> okay. And uh, I rush to the tavern. You rush to, to the tavern. that silly little book. You rush to the tavern. You step inside. And uh, you see that very same Aarakocra woman before looking, paging through the book herself. And it seems, seems she's muttering to herself, kind of pointing, uh, kind of reading her, not lips, beak. <laughs> you see she's <laughs> mouthing the words. What about that one? Ooh, that one looks nice. Look, lady, I don't know who you are, what your ambitions are, but I have a lot of talking to do with you. Oh. She looks at you, she looks around. And then she, not speaking to you, that the one? Mm -hmm. Really? Oh, well, I'd be happy to have a conversation with you, good sir. What's he saying? <laughs> well, perhaps you should talk to him yourself. And you feel the entire tavern go dark. And kind of yeah. in her place, a second humanoid kind of almost fades into her body, replacing her gesture. Uh, replacing her and fitting her gesture. It is your good old friend non-stop begonias. <laughs> your ex. <laughs> Short time no see, you goblin. Ah, good to see you. Oh, yes. Ah, oh, by the way, this is my ex. He couldn't really provide. All talk and very little bite. <laughs> Had a very, very massive blunder a couple of Rex. days ago. Our business isn't done yet. I had a hiccup, that's it. Listen, boss. I had plans. You had plans. They didn't work out. I decided to cut my losses, you know. And this... I had confidence. You had cowardice. Oh, no. I... I'm just doing something logical. You understand. Who's this? Oh, this one. Oh, she's great. Uh, she's very, very responsible. She knows what she's going to do after she becomes one, you know, bigger than she is. Becomes what? Oh, that's not really your concern, but swimming around in that little ambitious head of yours, I, I kept on waiting to see the finish line. At least being able to see it, but no hide nor hair of it in sight for weeks we were together. You don't have a plan. You never had a plan. You were just flying by the seat of your pants, hoping things worked out somehow, that all the pieces would align. No wonder you stayed starved until you met me. 
you don't know how long these things take and you don't know how our world works. Once you have a set goal, even if you don't have a plan, you will get there as long as you don't give up. But, it seems like you've given up on me. <laughs> Just assessing my losses, that's all, boss. I see. So, no regrets either way. Except the ones you will have. Uh, and I, I address her directly. And uh, how have you become acquainted with that? <laughs> oh, well. I think that's a little bit confidential. Not currently. Oh, this, um, I'm just... You're in an accessible company, and I would like to get to know you. Now, uh, Sapagonia uh, speaks up. Oh, go ahead. It'll make him jealous. <laughs> Very well, then. I, well, decided to take a little bit of a bold step and peruse through some of the restricted sections at the very bottom level of Aguna's library, and that seemed to catch this guy's eye. Or eyes. A reader. My eyes narrow. <laughs> so you have something I don't. I, I guess you could say that. I also have results. <sighs> he like cranes his neck like that was a punch to his chest. Oh, tell him, tell him the other thing, tell him the other thing. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Ah, the reason I wanted to go into the restricted section is to find a little bit of confirmation. And, well, I got it. And I'm, oh, well, I don't mean to brag, but um, thanks to some of those restricted books, I was able to surmise that I have a little bit of the dragon hidden in me. Hmm? And non-stop Agonias goes, See? Results. Not faith. Not this blind trust. Something tangible. Did, did what, dragon what specifically? She just says she has dragon in her. Uh, as you have been told by the previous dragon that people can cultivate this power, it can't be fully yes. unlocked until they are approved by Olympi officials themselves. But some people do have the potential. <laughs> She is implying that she knows for a fact she can be a dragon. It's the second bird in one day we've heard of that. <laughs> it's nice to meet some competition. <laughs> oh. You'll learn my name later. No offense, boss, but you're not competition. You're a pit stop. <laughs> And you're a car crash. What does that mean? What's a car? <laughs> well, I can see we're What's going nowhere. <laughs> so, we'll be taking our gifts elsewhere. Thank you. If you can ever figure out where all this power you have is leading, well, I won't be joining you, but I'll happily congratulate you on finally growing up. <laughs> Enjoy your isolated attempt at success. LBC. Mm. And word walks away without any clever thoughts in his mind. Without any thoughts in his mind. No yes. thoughts hit him. With his brain turned did, off. Did you get the book? No, I don't know how to read. Oh! Oh yeah, did you want to get yeah, the book? Yeah. <laughs> you said he did, he dropped Wait. it off, I thought. The vacation oh, spots? No, she was. Oh, the book for the guy. The book for the guy. The guy, the side the... quest, the locate object. Oh, yeah! Well, it's a good thing you yeah, gave go, that guy go, a go, fake go, name. Yeah, 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 a yeah. heel turn. Also. <laughs> and and just bum one more her. thing. <laughs> she, she just, she just. What's that over there? Let's go of both uh, sides, like both hands up as if she's like being arrested. And then uh, you hear the voice of nonstop Agonias. Take it. We already found our spot anyway. <laughs> There's something very upsetting in the strange scribbles in this book. And I will have them in time. And I, I scuttle out of there like a lizard. <laughs> <laughs> and you're able to return the book back to the merchant, who pays you a nice little 20 gold pieces for returning it. Woo! Wow. And I think that's going to be where we call the session for today. Yeah. yeah. Very productive, guys. Good work. <laughs>